Hi everybody, Shannon Petrovich with Therapist Talks. So you realize you're in a relationship with someone with borderline personality disorder and you really love them and you want to stay. Here are some strategies. If you're in a relationship with someone with borderline personality, you know your life can be dictated by the push-pull and the ups and downs of this disorder. How do you maintain your own mental health if you choose to stay in that relationship? The truth is it's very hard and choosing to stay really needs to be a flexible decision so that if the behavior becomes abusive, you know there are limits to what you will tolerate. In the meantime, here's some insights and strategies to help you through. Number one, are they in therapy? If not, this will be a hard slog and you may want to set a boundary right off the bat that you will only stay if they get in and stay in therapy. Number two, are you getting the support you need? Do you have family and friends who are going to support you as this challenge uh, rocks the very core of your stability? Number three, here are some insights. These will help you put some rationale into the irrational. First and foremost, the primary driving force is the fear of abandonment. If you look at every conflictual interaction that you have with this person, you'll probably be able to trace it to some fearful reaction of some perceived or real sense of abandonment. If it's real, you can address it directly. If it's perceived, you can challenge it directly. When you put this as your understanding and focus, you start to speak the same language and you stop going in circles with nonsensical arguments. Number four, whatever the emotion is, it never justifies abusive language, attitudes, or actions. People with BPD are prone to justifying their actions through their pain. And then when they're with an empathic person and that person understands their pain and the fear of abandonment, it often leads to giving that person a pass on their abusive behavior. This is honestly the worst thing you can do for them and for yourself. When you enable their behavior, they will not learn to check, filter, modulate, or moderate their emotions or actions. They'll usually even escalate their abusive language and behavior over time as they feel more and more entitled to acting out. It's critical to give them the message that you understand and empathize with their feelings and you do not accept abuse in any form in your relationship. If they can't commit to non-abusive communications and actions, you need to disconnect for your own mental health. Number five, boundaries. Boundaries are the most important skill you can develop. These are fueled by the above commitment to not accept abusive behavior. And they become the broken record to assert that conversations and conflicts will remain civil and sane. If you think of your intensity level on a 1 to 10 scale with 1 being very calm and 10 being screaming abusiveness, it's important that each of you keep tabs on your level number throughout a conflict. Nothing good happens between 5 and 10. So if either of you gets into that zone, either one of you can call a timeout. Take some time, calm down, come back and talk when you're both in a calmer state. The person with BPD will be upset by this as it's the very abandonment they fear but this alone can help them retrain themselves to calm and stay focused rather than going off the rails when starting to get upset. If you disengage when they escalate, they'll learn to self-calm before you disengage. If they escalate to violence, that's another one of those signals that this is not going to work and you need to move on. Number six, time apart and time for yourself. This again will be a trigger for the person with BPD and their natural desire will be to isolate you with themselves. It's critical for your own mental health and for their growth that you don't go along with this. You need time on your own and with your friends and they need to learn to be on their own and with other friends too. The pressure and manipulations will likely start to ramp up with whining all the way to fury and threatening to end the relationship. But stay the course. Stay the course with what's healthy and not what keeps the peace. Part of the borderline's manipulation strategy is to make life so difficult when you're not doing what they want that they gradually train you not to make waves. They don't want you to do anything that makes them uncomfortable and so they make it uncomfortable for you when you do that. You become their perfect placator. This is unhealthy for you and it's unhealthy for them. Again, you will become mentally exhausted and they will be enabled not to grow. Number seven, talk directly and honestly about the borderline behavior when it occurs. Again, don't become a placator. 
That means saying something like, I can see that you're triggered by me wanting to go play racquetball with the guys, and I understand that you're fearful, but there's nothing to worry about, and I'm going to be back in a few hours. And then you take off. Or, you've been in a rage since I talked on the phone with my old friend, and I don't appreciate being treated this way. I did nothing wrong, and I'm going to go for a walk. I hope you can calm down before I get back. Or, in the very extreme, I'm not going to stay here and be verbally abused. I'm leaving. Ultimately, you can both find a healthy relationship if you both work at it. For you, it's about self-awareness, self-care, and being careful not to become a placator or an enabler. If you've appreciated this video, please hit like, please subscribe to this channel, and stick around and we will be back with lots more. Share it on your social media so that other people can gain from these insights and strategies. Take good care of yourselves and I'll talk to you again soon.